Tonight, cases continue to drop across New South Wales on the path to recovery and better access to surgical services offered for Port Pirie residents. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. Tonight, there's further signs New South Wales could be on the path to recovery, with less than a thousand cases recorded and another COVID-free day for Will Kenya. Hope also growing, many families will able to reunite by Christmas. Broken Hill doing the right thing on another positive day for COVID numbers. Two new cases recorded in the city and for the second time, no new cases in Wilcannia. The um, analysis from our public health unit, the numbers have stabilised. Across the state, 935 cases today and four people lost their lives. The daily death toll still a month from peaking. And we should never lose sight of that, no matter what else is happening in terms of the vaccination rate or anything else. That is the likely scenario in October, so we can't be complacent. Local hospitalisations remain unchanged with one patient in Broken Hill and another in Wilcannia. Around 2,000 people were tested in the last week. Today, locals were again responding to new casual contact exposure sites. You can find a full list of venues on the New South Wales Government website. The Alma Oval site remaining open for now, despite previous reports. Obviously, we are running today. And I'm not surprised because the numbers jumped yesterday. Vaccination rates continue to exceed expectations. 88.4% of eligible Broken Hill locals have had at least one dose and 58.1% are fully vaccinated. Health also confirming there's been around three people escape quarantine facilities, saying security doesn't have the authority to detain them. We do inform the police, we work very closely with the police. So we have to do another, if not contact tracing, because we don't know where they've been. Across the border, Victoria has unveiled its roadmap to live with COVID, easing restrictions with New South Wales and reinstating the border bubble, though Broken Hill remains locked out. The Silver City hasn't been returned to the bubble and is still an extreme risk zone. A plan will be announced later this week to allow stranded Victorians to return home. The border could fully reopen in early November when that state hits 80% double dose. Lachlan Ita, 7 Spencer Golf News. And ahead of borders reopening, vaccinations will be mandatory for all of Rex Airlines customer facing staff. Pilots, cabin crew and check-in staff must be fully vaccinated by the start of November. The airline saying it'll be the first to achieve this. Qantas and Virgin will also require their staff to be fully vaccinated by mid-November. Port Pirie residents are set to benefit from more efficient and better access to surgical services as part of a new outreach service starting today. The York and Northern Local Health Network Executive Director says it's a great step for the region. A new service set to deliver better outcomes for Port Pirie patients. Oh, it's a very exciting time for the York and Northern Local Health Network and also for Northern Adelaide Local Health Network. A partnership between the York and Northern and Northern Adelaide Local Health Networks now seeing three new surgeons at the Port Pirie Hospital. They will visit on a weekly basis and work for two days a week, one for consultations and the other for surgery. The remainder of the week will be supported by phone and telehealth services at the Lyle McEwen Hospital. What was different about this opportunity was the chance to create a partnership whereby a surgeon works not just for one health network but they work for two. The joint service will deliver more efficient care, for some alleviating financial pressure, for others avoiding a trip to Adelaide for consultations and potentially their surgery. The surgeons able to escalate complex cases to the Lyle McEwen Hospital, ensuring a continuity of care is with the patient from Port Pirie to the city. Our two surgeons, uh, Priya and Steve, were here as medical students several years ago and now have come back to serve the community here uh, at a senior level. The York and Northern Executive Medical Director says this is the start of new opportunities in the local health network. This is the beginning of a very, very important and significant partnership between the two networks, which will help the patients in Piri immensely. 
The new surgical outreach service launches today, with consultations starting as early as tomorrow. Patients in Port Piri can speak to their GP to arrange a referral. To anyone who does uh, uh, need um, advice or uh, input from a surgeon, we're very happy to see you here. Uh, and we look forward to working with you here in Port Piri and if needed, down in the city as well. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. Emergency services personnel attended the scene of a serious crash near Fowler's Bay, which closed the air highway yesterday. Just before 4.30am on Sunday, two trucks collided on the highway near Fowler's Bay Road. One of the truck drivers involved sustained serious injuries, while a passenger and the second truck driver both received minor injuries in the crash. A vacant house in Port Augusta has been destroyed in a suspicious fire. At 6.30 Friday night, Emergency crews were called to the Frome Street property after reports of a blaze. Despite efforts to extinguish the fire, the house was completely destroyed. Police say neighbours evacuated their premises as a precaution, but no other properties were threatened. No injuries have been reported. Police believe the fire was deliberately lit and are asking nearby residents to check any CCTV they might have captured. Witnesses are also urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Meanwhile, investigations continue into the cause of a car fire on the outskirts of Broken Hill last night. Fire crews arrived to find the station wagon fully alight beside the Silver City Highway just after 8pm. They say the occupants of the vehicle weren't there at the time. They took approximately 10 minutes to extinguish the fire and secure, uh, secure the scene and extinguish the fire. Another half hour uh, conducting investigations. Police also attended and are treating the blaze as suspicious. Still to come tonight, the Air Peninsula, one of seven locations picked for the future of hydrogen. And an inquiry into floodplain harvesting in New South Wales begins. Welcome back. The federal government has announced a $1.2 billion hydrogen investment aiming to increase jobs in regional Australia. Seven prospective locations across the country have been identified including the Air Peninsula. Sites are aimed to consolidate the country's natural resources strengths, helping to unlock clean and cheap energy. A three-day inquiry has begun into the management of floodplain harvesting in New South Wales. It comes after a state government proposal to licence the water was blocked by a disallowance motion in the Upper House in May. The committee will investigate whether floodplain harvesting is legal without a licence and how take can be regulated in the future. Its findings will be released by the end of November. $1 million in grants is now available to help repair, restore and sustain the state's regional coastline areas. The funding, part of the state government's Securing the Future of Our Regional Coastline initiative. The grants are aiming to help the District Council of Sejuna repair the foreshore seawall, which was damaged in recent storms. An Air Peninsula community has been shortlisted for this year's Agricultural Town of the Year. Kimber was picked after more than 3,200 votes were cast for various towns across South Australia. Recognising excellent agricultural practices that flows into communities. For a second year in a row, Kimber has been shortlisted for this year's Agricultural Town of the Year Award. I'm extremely proud to again be selected as a finalist. I have to say it's a credit to our local farmers, businesses, community groups and residents to again be in the running. Last year, Pinaru was selected for the title in recognition for its thriving agricultural sector, which has been nurtured for generations. Kimber's mayor hoping the title would boost the town's morale among his residents and the wider farming community. It's no secret we've had some tough years recently. We've been through several droughts. Hopefully this year is looking a bit better, but a, a rain today would certainly help everyone. The winning entry will be given a town entrance sign recognising the accolade and a community event to celebrate the achievement. Minster Johnson eager for his town to be picked this year. We're really extremely proud of our community and our farmers are wonderful, innovative people and we really look forward to uh, the finalists being announced. An independent panel will select the winner announced at an event in November. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Golf News. A new attraction has officially opened to the public in Wirribara. The Bluff Lookout is being described as a unique tourism project, allowing people to travel to the top of the Southern Flinders Ranges in the Wirribara Forest. It's hoped the lookout will reinvigorate the area, drawing both tourists and locals to the region. Federal and state government representatives 
along with local council gathered at the lookout, marking the occasion. New equipment has been added to the Corn Aerodrome in an ongoing site upgrade. The Aerodrome will now be able to provide private, commercial and emergency service operators with safe access to the region around the clock. Fit to fly, significant upgrades set to help local aviators. The Quorn Aerodome has been outfitted with new equipment, making it safer and a viable option for nighttime landings. The upgrades made possible with funding acquired through the Commonwealth's Regional Airports Program. We obtained $520,000, um, which does save Council uh, a hefty amount in maintenance because uh, it was something that we had to look at anyway in the near future. The new equipment, including an illuminated direction windsock and a new perimeter fence around the aerodrome. The runway also installed with solar power lighting. Illuminating the runway makes the aerodrome safe to access 24-7. It's a safety oh and uh, deal really because uh, what it means is that the runway is now all weather um, so we can get people out. You know, obviously um, we could bring choppers in and that, but it's so much easier. The runway now able to provide better access to emergency services such as the Royal Flying Doctor Service. There is also interest from the local tourism industry to use the newly updated airstrip for more private and charter flight activities. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. All aboard for the Port Lincoln Railway Museum's newest display. And table tennis fever hits Port Augusta schools, competing in a major tournament. Hello again. The Port Lincoln Railway Museum has a new display, just in time for the school holidays. The replica locomotives, showcasing the Air Peninsula's rich railway history, while paying tribute to a pioneer of Australian railway modelling. These replica trains built over half a century ago, finding a new home here at the Port Lincoln Railway Museum, just as the city's museum trail launches. It's a new display that we've been very fortunate to put on recently. Um, these are models, accurate scale models, of a lot of the trains that ran on Air Peninsula. Ralph Holden, a former church minister in Cummins, began modelling these trains in the mid-1960s. It wasn't until 2011 when he completed his final train. It really is a very wonderful uh, historical snapshot of, of a very important era in Air Peninsula Railways. After Mr Holden's passing in August last year, his family decided to donate the locomotives to the Port Lincoln Railway Museum. The museum delighted the models are on display. His modelling was well known around Australia in the modelling fraternity and it would have been a real tragedy if, if it had just disappeared from, from the scene completely. The models built out of sheet brass and balsa wood. Each train, railway car and goods wagon intricately designed. The workmanship in these models is, is quite incredible. Also hoping children will visit the display during the school holidays. The museum saying it's a chance for locals to see replica trains that service the Air Peninsula. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The Port Pirie Regional Art Gallery was the place to be over the weekend, launching a new Tanathi Festival exhibition. The art display featuring the work of seven female artists from across regional and remote South Australia. Bringing Tananthi to Port Pirie. I feel really emotional because it's been, you know, it's not straightforward bringing, bringing works of art together and artists together and, and I think Marika's done a beautiful job. The Port Pirie Regional Art Gallery launching the Drifting Sands exhibition yesterday as part of this year's Tananthi Festival. Curated by Marika Davies, featuring the work of seven female artists, likening the strength of women to the energy of wind as it drives sand across country. It is a Tanadi festival that is, that is seen as an international exhibition and to have it in this region and have our regional artists in it is very important and, and it hasn't happened before. From art to a moving installation, even woven pieces. The exhibition celebrating the influences of women in the past who have shaped the artists' lives while looking to guide the next generation. 
My pieces represent my family and my culture. Um, it's not just from Port Piri area. I like to re um, represent my Agamatna family as well. The arts and culture is such an important part of who we are as Aboriginal people, but also of who we are as human beings. Locals and visitors encouraged to check it out. Definitely come out. It's on until the 7th of November, so come out and contribute. You know, you might want to buy something. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. The competition was on in Port Augusta, with students from various schools taking on a table tennis tournament. The tabletop fun, encouraging students to be active and make new friends. In rallies like this, every ball counts. Stirling North Primary School hosting students to a day of fun, mingling and friendly competition between schools. Today we're doing our Sapsaza table tennis competition and that's for the Northern District in this area near Port Augusta. Seaview Christian College, Port Augusta West and Stirling North Primary School attending the event. With other schools missing out on the competition due to a student free day. Different standards, uh, there's some relative beginners and others that are quite skilled. Uh, so there's a varied competition today. In short matches, each student gets to play those in their age bracket in a rally. You get to have fun and be with your friends. I've had a lot of good competitors with a good skill level. Not too hard and it's been really fun to verse people. It keeps you fit and healthy and it's like really enjoyable. Um, you get to hang out with your friends and it's really interesting you don't know what's going to happen. Students excited to be back playing Sapsaza Sport after competitions earlier in the year were cancelled. The more that they can be involved, uh, the better. The, the times that they haven't been able to uh, was quite disappointing for them, so being able to get back into it and have fun and competing again is really good for them. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Footy finals hit the region. Mark Zeta will bring us all the results from the weekend. And we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. The weekend was packed full of footy finals with three close and exhilarating games. In Wyala, Centrals have taken the Premiership after a spirited battle with Waruna Bay. With the details, here's Mark Zeta. It was a bumper weekend of footy finals and we'll start off at the WFL Grand Final where Waruna Bay and Central Wyala kept the scores tight right until the end of the fourth quarter. Nothing could separate the two sides for three quarters, with only a goal between them at the start of the fourth quarter. However, the previous finals experience of the Roosters started to show late in the term. Josh Madigan, the team's leading goal scorer, kicking a major score in the 15th minute, which opened the floodgates for Central Wyala. Minutes later, Cooper Hewish kicked another one for the reigning Premiers. From there, three more goals were scored, with Dwayne Colson sealing the result after the siren. The final score, 15-7-97 to 9-7-61. Anytime you play football, you play to win a grand final. So yeah, the players got their rewards today. So yeah, very good. We were in a base coach already motivating his side for next year after the tough loss. We weren't good enough, but let it hurt us and it will drive us next year and we'll take it out. Well done. It's back-to-back -back premierships for Central Wyala, who won against West Wyala last year. Moving to the Port Lincoln Football League Grand Final, it was way back against Marble Range in the decider. Waybacks won the toss and kicked with a strong breeze towards the Lincoln Cinema end. The match was fierce and competitive, with Wayback holding the initial edge with a three-goal lead at half-time. However, from the start of the second half, Marble Range showed why they were the best team of the year. The team scoring two goals into the breeze while Waybacks only managed one. Marble Range dominated the final quarter, keeping Waybacks scoreless. Tynan Keeley, the match winner for Marble Range, his 30 metre goal put them in the lead for the first time in the game. They held on to win by three points with the final score 5 13 43 to 5 10 40. And over in the Great Flinders Football League Grand Final in Tumby Bay, United Yilana won the flag by three points in a thriller against Cummins Capini. That's it for Footy Wrap. Tune in tomorrow where we take a look at the rest of the weekend's sports results. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. 
Thanks, Ruby, and good evening, everyone. Well, we needed a jacket and an umbrella today. Showers across most parts, but they'll be able to go back in the coat rack this week with conditions clearing up. From 3 p.m., Port Lincoln had a shower, too, and was 15. Broken Hill was windy and cloudy in 18, and Woodna reached 17 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Port Augusta reached 20. Whaler had a shower, too, and was 18. Port Pirie was windy in 17. Adelaide was wet and windy and 14. Kadena and Cleve reached 16. Clare was 12. Cooper was 21. Taking a look at the satellite image now, cloud crossing southeast South Australia with a cold front is generating a few gusty showers. Skies are clear further north with light winds and clear skies, leading to a chilly night. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southwesterly winds 20 to 30 knots, seas 2 to 3 metres, and south to southwesterly swells also 2 to 3 metres. Port Lincoln 16 and cloudy tomorrow. Cleve will also be cloudy in 15. Wouldn't have partly cloudy and 19, while in Port Augusta to be to be partly cloudy and 17, Kadena cloudy and 16 degrees, and Port Pirie to reach 18, Clare cloudy and 12, and Broken Hill be mostly sunny and will reach 16 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, Port Pirie and Wilder cloud clearing and 19, Port Lincoln and Broken Hill partly cloudy in 18 on Wednesday. 17 degrees in Kadena and Adelaide, Woodna and Cooper Pedy, sunny and 22. To Thursday, now to be sunny across the region, Port Augusta and Woodna to top 27. Port Piri, Wyla and Cooper Pedy, 26. Port Lincoln, 22. Looking at Friday now, sunny in Port Augusta, 25. Port Piri, Wyla mostly sunny, 21. Port Lincoln partly cloudy in 17. Cooper Pedy sunny in a high of 29. Broken Hill also sunny to reach 26. And our friends in Adelaide will have possible showers and reach 17. Well, it's just four days to the weekend now, Ruby. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. See you soon with an update. It's back to you. Lovely. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.